And also with reaction joining us now, Fox News terrorism analyst Dr. Walid Fares, the director of Jihad Watch, Robert Spencer, and from the Center for Immigration Studies, Steve Camerata is with us. Guys, all right, let me put up on the screen um, exactly the numbers that we're looking at in Europe. There's been a lot of immigration there. Uh, the number of Muslims, for example, living in Europe in 2010. Well, there you have the number in France, 4.7. But let's go to uh, the number living in Europe total, which is 44.1 million, 6% of the population. And if you look at the projected number by 2030, 58.2 million. Robert Spencer, um, you're an expert. You study this. When you look at the numbers of people, it's estimated about 10% of the population of France, the no-go neighborhoods, how they have separated themselves, they're not assimilating, um, they even sh separate Sharia courts. Do you believe this has contributed to what happened yesterday? Oh, absolutely, Sean. There's no doubt about it whatsoever. Because in those enclaves, and remember, there are 751 of them all over France. And that's not just rumor or conjecture. That's based on a French government website that lists them all. These 751 no-go areas are essentially ruled by Sharia law. They have no regard for French law. They do not teach French law. They inculcate Sharia. And what Sharia teaches is somebody who blasphemes and insults Muhammad must be put to death. Two of the three shooters at the Charlie Hebdo offices were raised, born and raised in France. They grew up in these areas and they learned that blasphemers must be put to death. That's what they were acting upon when they went into the Charlie Hebdo offices. You know, I want you to be very clear on this. Rowan Scarborough in the Washington Times had a great piece on it today and he described it as growing Islamist mini states. In other words, that there is no French authority. So ostensibly you have a country or many countries within a country. Why would the French have allowed that to happen? Absolutely. Well, see, Islamic law is a political system as well as a religious one. And it has a complete system for the governance of society and the political or social order. And so the immigrants that the French have been bringing in, as well as other European states and the UK, they, many of them have come believing that because the Quran says Muslims are the best of people and that non-Muslims are the most vile of created beings, that the French government and society has no value and has to be replaced ultimately with Sharia. And in the meantime, Muslims will set up these separate enclaves where Sharia will rule and the law of the land will be completely disregarded. Steve now, Camerata. this is just a recipe for yeah. disaster because with the growing populations, the immigrant populations growing, there's just going to be a clash inevitably between them and the non-Muslims. Yeah, because they're very, they're very, they're contrary values, they're conflicting values. Steve Camerata, from, a, from an immigration exactly. standpoint, which is, which is where you're coming from. So you're talking about 44.1 million Muslims right there right now, an estimated, what, 58 million Muslims that they expect by 2030. Then the question has to arise if they don't want to assimilate, they want separate neighborhoods, they want separate court systems, they don't even want help from the police or the fire department, but yet they get to vote. Why would France, why would these countries in Europe then allow them to come to their countries? Because well, they, they want to change them and they have values that conflict with Western values. No, it's a very important question. Immigration is often just thought of as about dollars and cents, taxes paid or labor markets. But there are these other profound and important questions, cultural questions or questions about national security. And unfortunately, we don't really ask those questions here. Remember, the Muslim population in the United States is smaller but growing very rapidly. It's about 3 million people now, about 100,000 new Muslim immigrants enter the United States each year. And we have no discussion about any of the possible national security implications, a kind of political correctness rules here, and unfortunately there as well. Now, there are things we could do to probably better assimilate people, but the bottom line is immigration is a discretionary policy. We can decide who to let in or not, and we don't even ask. Yeah, Waleed, oh, we're losing him. Uh, Steve, I'm sorry about that. Waleed Ferris, let me bring you into this here. So in spite of all of the accommodations that the French have made, the Belgians have made, the, the British have made, so if people are coming from Muslim countries and they believe in Sharia, values contrary to Western values, the antithesis of these values, um, then it raises the question about the United States. Do we have to examine the values of people and ascertain those values before they come here? Well, first of all, Sean, in Europe and of course later on in North America and in Australia, when these communities migrate, uh, they migrate as communities and within the communities you have all sorts of 
friends. So when those enclaves are established, it's like any ethnic enclave here in the United States or in Canada. Problem is who is mobilizing, who is indoctrinating, who is forcing or pushing these enclaves to refuse law order, to become a no-go zone. I would call for a better understanding of the networks who are in control. It's not just states, many states. There is a regime inside, the Muslim Brotherhood, the pro-Iranian, the Salafis. I think we should zoom on these forces which are creating that problem. All right, thank you all for being with us. Appreciate your expertise. And you can see on the other side of the screens, those were the first pictures from Charlie uh, Ebdo, where you can see the blood inside of the office building where this carnage and this evil took place. Now we have a busy news night tonight, how some in the Western media are giving radical Muslims a pass. Mark Stein is here to respond to that tonight with his analysis, plus tonight here on Hannity.